Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God will love you regardless of what you do. Your badness will not change your new born again nature any more than your goodness would change your sinful nature. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my fourth week of teaching on a series through the book of Romans. I'm going verse by verse through Romans. And I have covered a lot of material. I've got this brand new book entitled Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. What this is is the printed text of Romans, plus I have written a digital commentary on over 25,000 verses in the Bible. And this is the Romans portion of that commentary. And then it has notes from teachings that I've done on this. So this is a compilation of different things just to help you understand the book of Romans. And like I've said at the very beginning, I had a man say back in uh, 1968 that if you could ever understand the first nine books, nine chapters of the book of Romans, that it would cause you to be spiritually mature. And I mean, for probably 15 or 20 years, I focused on Romans, and it took me a long time to begin to unlock some of these truths. But I agree with that, that this is, this is Christianity 101. This is basic stuff that everybody should know, and yet most people don't know it. So anyway, I encourage you to please get those products. We will be continuing this teaching uh, next week. So we've gone now down through Romans chapter 6, and verse 16. Let me just go back and say that in Romans chapter 6, Paul asked this question twice, and he says, Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? If you preach grace the way Paul preached it, people are going to think you're saying that you can just go live in sin. Now, that's not what he was saying. That's not what I'm saying. But if you preach grace properly, that will be a question that people have because Paul answered it twice right here. And then over in the book of Galatians, he did it two more times. So four times in Paul's teaching, he says, am I saying that you can just go live in sin? No, that's not what I'm saying. God forbid. And the first reason he gave in Romans chapter 6 is because you are dead to sin. Your old sin nature has been crucified. It's dead. It's gone. It's non-existent. There is nothing any longer compelling a Christian to live in sin. The only reason a Christian has any propensity for sin is because they haven't renewed their mind. Man, I've talked about that all week long. The second reason that he gives in verse 16 is that when you yield to sin, you yield to the person who's the author of that sin unto Satan, which he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, or if you yield yourself to God and obey Him, then you release the things of God. So your actions either loose God or loose the devil in your life. So the second reason a Christian doesn't live in sin is because you don't want to give Satan a free shot at you. You don't want to give him access to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, to your relationships, to your money. And if you live in sin, you are doing that. You're just saying, Satan, come shoot your best shot. And the Bible says over in 1 Peter chapter 5 that your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. He cannot devour everybody. He can only devour people who cooperate with him through yielding to him. One of your greatest defenses against the devil is obeying God. Satan can't do anything to you without your consent and your cooperation. So quit cooperating with him. Did you know, basically, the church has seen that when you live in sin, bad things happen. And I agree with that. But where the error is, the church has said the reason bad things happen is because God's angry at you and God's punishing you. God's the one that caused your marriage to fall apart. God's the one that caused your child to be born with this birth defect because you were a sinner. God's the one who caused your baby to be aborted because he, you hadn't tithed. I gave that testimony earlier, and that was physically what somebody had been told that the reason 
THEY HAD A MISCARRIAGE WAS BECAUSE THEY HADN'T BEEN TITHING. SEE, RELIGION WILL SEE THAT WHEN YOU LIVE IN SIN AND YOU DO SOMETHING WRONG, THAT BAD THINGS HAPPEN. BUT WHAT'S WRONG IS THEY'RE SAYING GOD IS THE ONE WHO IS PUNISHING YOU BECAUSE YOU DID IT. NO, IF YOU ARE TRULY BORN AGAIN, ALL OF YOUR SIN WAS PLACED UPON JESUS. HE IS NOT GIVING YOU WHAT YOU DESERVE. HE LOVES YOU, AND THERE'S NOTHING YOU CAN DO THAT MAKES HIM LOVE YOU MORE. THERE'S NOTHING YOU CAN DO THAT MAKES HIM LOVE YOU LESS. AND WHEN I SAY SOMETHING LIKE THAT, PEOPLE WHO THINK THAT IT'S ONLY GOD THAT CAUSES EVIL IN YOUR LIFE WILL IMMEDIATELY THINK, WELL, THEN WHAT IS THE MOTIVATION FOR LIVING HOLY? BECAUSE THE ONLY REASON THEY WERE LIVING HOLY WAS SO THAT THEY WOULDN'T COME UNDER GOD'S WRATH AND PUNISHMENT. NO, GOD'S WRATH WAS PLACED UPON JESUS. I AM NEVER COMING UNDER GOD'S WRATH AND PUNISHMENT. HE WILL CORRECT ME, BUT it's, THERE'S A DIFFERENCE BETWEEN CORRECTION AND PUNISHMENT. HE'S NOT GOING TO SMITE ME WITH SICKNESS, DISEASE. HE'S NOT GOING TO KILL SOMEBODY CLOSE TO ME BECAUSE HE LOVES ME. <laughs> IT'S AMAZING HOW RELIGION CAN PERVERT THINGS LIKE THAT. NO, HE CORRECTS ME, AND IT SAYS IN 2 TIMOTHY CHAPTER 3, VERSE 16, ALL SCRIPTURE IS GIVEN BY INSPIRATION OF GOD AND IS PROFITABLE FOR DOCTRINE, FOR REPROOF, FOR CORRECTION, FOR INSTRUCTION IN RIGHTEOUSNESS, THAT THE MAN OF GOD MIGHT BE PERFECT, THOROUGHLY FURNISHED UNTO ALL GOOD WORKS. THE WAY THAT GOD CORRECTS A BELIEVER IS THROUGH THE WORD. NOW, IF YOU DON'T LISTEN TO THE WORD AND IF YOU AREN'T FOLLOWING THE WORD, YOU CAN BE CORRECTED BY THE NEGATIVE THINGS THAT HAPPEN IN YOUR LIFE. YOU COULD GO OVER AND BEAT YOUR HEAD AGAINST A, a STONE WALL AND LEARN THAT THAT'S NOT SMART, or, BUT YOU COULD TAKE MY WORD FOR IT. YOU DON'T HAVE TO EXPERIENCE IT. GOD IS NOT THE ONE WHO'S GIVING YOU THESE PROBLEMS, BUT YOU CAN LEARN BY YOUR PROBLEMS, BUT DON'T BLAME GOD FOR IT. GOD ISN'T DOING THAT TO YOU. GOD PLACED ALL OF HIS WRATH FOR YOUR SIN UPON JESUS. HE IS NOT GOING TO PUNISH YOU. HE PUNISHED JESUS FOR YOUR SIN. THAT WOULD BE DOUBLE JEOPARDY TO PUNISH YOU, TOO. BUT IF YOU GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN, SATAN IS GOING TO GAIN ACCESS TO YOU. SO I AGREE THAT WHEN YOU LIVE IN SIN, BAD THINGS HAPPEN, BUT I'M SAYING IT'S NOT GOD WHO'S CAUSING THOSE BAD THINGS. IT'S SATAN WHO'S GOING ABOUT SEEKING WHOM HE MAY DEVOUR, AND WHEN YOU LIVE IN SIN, YOU ARE GIVING SATAN FREE ACCESS TO YOU. AND HE DOESN'T COME FOR ANY OTHER PURPOSE EXCEPT TO STEAL, TO KILL, AND TO DESTROY. SO IF YOU'RE LIVING IN SIN, YOU ARE JUST STUPID. I DON'T MEAN THAT MALICIOUSLY, BUT YOU ARE STUPID TO LIVE IN SIN BECAUSE SATAN IS GOING TO TAKE ADVANTAGE OF IT. BUT WHAT I'M SAYING IS GOD LOVES YOU, STUPID. HE LOVES ME WHEN I DO A PIECE OF STUPID. HE LOVES US IN SPITE OF WHAT WE DO, BUT I AM LIVING AS HOLY AS I CAN, AND I'M SEEKING TO FOLLOW THE LORD BECAUSE, NUMBER ONE, THAT'S WHAT I WANT TO DO. MY NATURE HAS BEEN CHANGED. NUMBER TWO, I DO NOT WANT TO GIVE SATAN ACCESS TO ME. HE WOULD LOVE TO DESTROY ME. YOU KNOW, HE'D LOVE TO DESTROY EVERY CHRISTIAN, BUT HE TAKES SPECIAL NOTICE OF PEOPLE THAT ARE IN POSITIONS OF LEADERSHIP. AND YOU KNOW, GOD HAS PUT ME IN A POSITION WHERE, BY THE GRACE OF GOD, I INFLUENCE MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF CHRISTIANS, AND SATAN WOULD JUST LOVE TO HAVE SOME SCANDAL OF SEXUAL IMMORALITY, STEALING MONEY, DOING SOMETHING THAT WOULD DISCREDIT ME AND KEEP PEOPLE FROM RECEIVING THE WORDS THAT I'M SHARING. AND SO I'M AWARE OF THAT. YOU KNOW, I COULD GO OUT AND LIVE IN SIN, AND GOD WOULD STILL LOVE ME. I BELIEVE THAT. I BELIEVE THAT WITH ALL MY HEART. BUT IT WOULD BE STUPID FOR ME TO DO THAT. IT'D BE STUPID FOR ME TO THROW AWAY THE CONFIDENCE THAT I'VE GAINED PEOPLE THAT HAVE PUT IN ME AND THAT PEOPLE ARE RESPONDING. IT WOULD BE JUST STUPID FOR ME TO DO THAT. BUT GOD WOULD STILL LOVE ME, BUT IT WOULD DESTROY THIS MINISTRY, AND SATAN WOULD LOVE TO LURE ME INTO THAT. AND SO I'M AWARE OF IT, AND BECAUSE OF IT, I DO CERTAIN THINGS. I GO OUT OF MY WAY TO AVOID THE VERY APPEARANCE OF EVIL. Uh, we, WE GO OVERBOARD IN MANY WAYS WITH TRANSPARENCY TO SHOW PEOPLE WHAT'S HAPPENING AND STUFF. SO I'M AWARE THAT I'M IN A BATTLE AND I AM NOT GOING TO GIVE SATAN PLACE. SO THAT'S ROMANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 16. KNOW YE NOT THAT TO WHOM YE YIELD YOURSELVES SERVANTS TO OBEY, HIS SERVANTS YE ARE, TO WHOM YE OBEY, WHETHER OF SIN UNTO DEATH OR OF OBEDIENCE UNTO RIGHTEOUSNESS. BUT GOD BE THANKED THAT YE WERE THE SERVANTS OF SIN. NOW GET THIS TERMINOLOGY, BECAUSE THROUGH THE REST OF THIS CHAPTER, HE'S GOING TO BE MAKING A COMPARISON HERE, AN 
ACTUALLY IT'S A CONTRAST, NOT A COMPARISON. AND THE TERMINOLOGY HERE IS REALLY IMPORTANT. SO IN VERSE 17, BUT GOD BE THANKED THAT YOU WERE THE SERVANTS OF SIN. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT BEFORE YOU WERE BORN AGAIN. AND SIN HERE IS NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST PHYSICAL ACTIONS, BUT THE SIN NATURE, THAT OLD SIN NATURE. YOU WERE THE SERVANTS OF SIN. YOU WERE A SLAVE IS WHAT THAT WORD IS, DULIOS. AND IT MEANS YOU ARE A SLAVE OF SIN. YOU WERE OBEYING THAT SINFUL NATURE. BUT YOU HAVE OBEYED FROM THE HEART THAT FORM OF DOCTRINE WHICH WAS DELIVERED UNTO YOU. BEING THEN MADE FREE FROM SIN, YOU BECAME SERVANTS OF RIGHTEOUSNESS. MAN, FREE FROM SIN. THIS GOES BACK UP HERE TO VERSE 7. IT SAYS, HE THAT IS DEAD IS FREED FROM SIN. I TALKED ABOUT THAT ON PREVIOUS DAYS, THAT YOU COULD BE FREED WITHOUT BEING FREE. FREED IS WHAT IS DONE TO YOU. FREE IS WHEN YOU WALK IN IT AND RECEIVE IT, ACTIVATE IT. SO THEN IN VERSE 18, BEING THEN MADE FREE FROM SIN, YOU BECAME SERVANTS OF RIGHTEOUSNESS. I SPEAK AFTER THE MANNER OF MAN BECAUSE OF THE INFIRMITY OF YOUR FLESH. FOR AS YOU HAVE YIELDED YOUR MEMBERS SERVANTS TO UNCLEANNESS AND TO INIQUITY, UNTO INIQUITY, EVEN SO, NOW YIELD YOUR MEMBERS SERVANTS TO RIGHTEOUSNESS UNTO HOLINESS. WHAT THIS IS SAYING IS, HE'S USING THE LOGIC OF A PERSON THAT DOESN'T EVEN KNOW THE LORD. I'M TALKING ABOUT uh, THINGS AFTER THE MANNER OF MAN. HE'D BEEN USING SPIRITUAL WISDOM, BUT NOT EVERYBODY'S SPIRITUAL, SO HE'S JUST GOING TO GET DOWN ON THEIR LEVEL AND TALK ABOUT SOMETHING THAT THEY CAN UNDERSTAND. IN THE SAME WAY THAT YOU LIVE FOR THE DEVIL BEFORE YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, NOW YOU SHOULD HAVE THAT SAME PASSION AND ZEAL TO LIVE FOR GOD NOW THAT YOU ARE BORN AGAIN. I THINK MOST PEOPLE CAN UNDERSTAND THAT. AND THEN LOOK AT THIS. IN VERSE 20, HE SAYS, FOR WHEN YOU WERE THE SERVANTS OF SIN, YOU WERE FREE FROM RIGHTEOUSNESS. NOW, WHAT DOES THAT MEAN? WELL, THIS SERVANTS OF SIN WAS ALSO USED IN VERSE 17. IT SAYS, GOD BE THANKED THAT YOU WERE THE SERVANTS OF SIN, BUT YOU HAVE OBEYED FROM THE HEART THAT FORM OF DOCTRINE WHICH WAS DELIVERED UNTO YOU. SO THIS IS TALKING ABOUT BEFORE YOU WERE BORN AGAIN. YOU WERE A SERVANT, AND THAT WORD SERVANT RIGHT HERE IS THE GREEK WORD DULIOS. IT'S TALKING ABOUT SLAVE, A BOND SLAVE. YOU WERE A SLAVE TO SIN. SO WHEN YOU WERE A SLAVE TO SIN, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT BEFORE YOU WERE BORN AGAIN, YOU WERE FREE FROM RIGHTEOUSNESS. WHAT DOES IT MEAN WHEN IT SAYS YOU WERE FREE FROM RIGHTEOUSNESS? IS THIS SAYING THAT BEFORE A PERSON GETS BORN AGAIN AND HAS A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, THEY CAN'T DO ANYTHING THAT'S RIGHT? NO, THAT'S NOT WHAT THAT'S SAYING. THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE WHO AREN'T BORN AGAIN, THEY DON'T CREDIT GOD WITH ANYTHING, AND YET THEY'RE GOOD PEOPLE. THEY DO GOOD THINGS FOR PEOPLE. YOU CAN DO GOOD THINGS, BUT WHAT THIS IS SAYING IS, THAT GOODNESS OR THAT RIGHTEOUSNESS, THOSE RIGHT ACTS, DON'T CHANGE THAT SINFUL NATURE. YOU ARE BY NATURE A CHILD OF THE DEVIL, AND YOUR GOODNESS CAN'T CHANGE YOUR BADNESS. MAN, THAT IS A HUGE STATEMENT RIGHT THERE THAT, AGAIN, A LOT OF PEOPLE DON'T UNDERSTAND THIS. A LOT OF PEOPLE RECOGNIZE, WELL, I'VE SINNED, I'VE DONE THINGS WRONG, BUT I'VE TURNED OVER A NEW LEAF. I'VE MADE A NEW YEAR'S RESOLUTION, AND I'M NOT GOING TO DIP OR CUSS OR CHEW OR GO WITH THOSE THAT DO. I'M GOING TO START LIVING THIS WAY. AND THEY they THINK THAT THEY CAN MAKE UP FOR THE BAD THAT THEY'VE DONE IN THEIR LIFE. THAT'S NOT TRUE. THE BIBLE SAYS IN JAMES CHAPTER 2, VERSE 10, THAT IF YOU KEEP THE WHOLE LAW AND YET OFFEND IN ONE POINT, YOU BECOME GUILTY OF ALL. THAT MEANS THAT IF YOU DID 99 THINGS OUT OF 100 RIGHT, AND IF YOU MISSED IT IN ONE THING, YOU DIDN'T MAKE 99, YOU MADE A ZERO. YOU HAVE TO MAKE 100, YOU HAVE TO BE PERFECT, OR YOU MISSED THE MARK. YOU FAIL. SO EVEN IF YOU COULD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER TRY AND ATONE FOR ALL THE THINGS YOU'VE DONE IN THE PAST THAT WERE WRONG, AND FROM NOW ON YOU NEVER DID ANYTHING WRONG, YOU COULDN'T ERASE THE BAD THINGS THAT YOU'VE DONE, AND THEREFORE ALL OF THAT GOODNESS WOULD BE COUNTED AS NOTHING. YOUR GOOD WORKS AND A PERSON WHO'S NOT BORN AGAIN, THEY'RE A SLAVE TO SIN, THEY CAN DO GOOD THINGS, BUT THAT GOODNESS DOESN'T CHANGE YOUR BADNESS. IT DOESN'T CHANGE YOUR NATURE. YOU HAVE TO BE BORN AGAIN. YOU HAVE TO HAVE A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP WHERE GOD COMES IN AND CHANGES YOUR HEART. SO REMEMBER THAT. 
WE'LL COME BACK TO THAT. IN VERSE 21, IT SAYS, WHAT FRUIT HAD YE THEN IN THOSE THINGS WHEREOF YOU ARE NOW ASHAMED? FOR THE END OF THOSE THINGS IS DEATH. BUT LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 22. BUT NOW, BEING MADE FREE FROM SIN AND BECOME SERVANTS TO GOD, YOU HAVE YOUR FRUIT UNTO HOLINESS AND THE END EVERLASTING LIFE. IN VERSE 20, IF BEING A SERVANT OF SIN WAS TALKING ABOUT BEFORE YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, NOW BEING SERVANTS TO GOD IS TALKING ABOUT AFTER YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, AFTER YOU'VE EXPERIENCED THIS CHANGED HEART AND YOUR OLD SINFUL NATURE BEING TAKEN AWAY. SO IT'S MAKING A CONTRAST. IF IN VERSE 20, BEFORE YOU WERE BORN AGAIN, YOU COULD DO GOOD THINGS, BUT THOSE GOOD THINGS COULDN'T CHANGE YOUR SINFUL, EVIL NATURE, WELL, THEN IN VERSE 22, IT SAYS, NOW YOU ARE A SERVANT TO GOD AND YOU ARE FREE FROM SIN. DOES THAT MEAN THAT A CHRISTIAN CAN'T SIN? NO, A CHRISTIAN CAN SIN, BUT THAT SIN DOESN'T CHANGE YOUR RIGHTEOUS NATURE ANY MORE THAN YOUR GOODNESS CHANGED YOUR SINFUL NATURE. YOU SEE, HE'S MAKING A CONTRAST HERE AND YOU'RE GOING TO ACCEPT ONE. IF YOU CAN ACCEPT THAT A PERSON IS BY NATURE A CHILD OF THE DEVIL, EPHESIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 3, AND YOU CAN'T JUST TURN OVER A NEW LEAF OR MAKE A NEW YEAR'S RESOLUTION AND LIVE GOOD FROM NOW ON, YOU HAVE TO BE CHANGED IN YOUR CORE, IN YOUR HEART. YOU HAVE TO HAVE THAT SINFUL NATURE TAKEN AWAY, AND YOU HAVE TO RECEIVE THE NEW BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT THAT GOD GIVES YOU AT BIRTH. IF YOU ACCEPT THAT, THAT YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE THIS EXCHANGE, NOT JUST TRY AND CHANGE BEHAVIOR MODIFICATION, BUT YOU'VE GOT TO BE CHANGED AT YOUR CORE, AND YOUR GOODNESS DOESN'T MAKE THAT CHANGE. YOU ARE AT YOUR CORE A SINNER UNTIL YOU GET BORN AGAIN, AND IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW MUCH GOOD YOU DO, THAT WILL NOT ATONE FOR THE CORE OF SIN THAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IF YOU ACCEPT THAT, WELL, THEN ON THE FLIP SIDE, YOU HAVE TO ACCEPT THAT ONCE YOU GET BORN AGAIN, EVEN THOUGH YOU SIN, AND YOU DO THINGS WRONG, THOSE SINS DON'T CHANGE YOUR RIGHTEOUS NATURE ANY MORE THAN YOUR GOOD ACTS CHANGED YOUR SINFUL NATURE. THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. AND THERE ARE SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU ARE TRULY BORN AGAIN. YOU HAVE RECEIVED THE FORGIVENESS OF YOUR SINS. YOU KNOW YOU HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD TO A DEGREE. YOU KNOW THAT IF YOU WERE TO DIE, YOU WOULD GO TO HEAVEN RIGHT NOW. BUT you, YOU FEEL LIKE I'VE MESSED UP SO BADLY THAT GOD COULDN'T LOVE ME. GOD COULDN'T USE ME. YOU KNOW, I ACTUALLY FELT THAT WAY WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM BECAUSE I WASN'T AS BOLD WITH MY WITNESS AS I SHOULD BE, AND I'D BEEN BROUGHT UP UNDER THIS THING THAT YOU GOT A WITNESS TO EVERYTHING THAT MOVED, AND I JUST FAILED IN A NUMBER OF WAYS, AND I FELT I WAS SO DISGUSTED WITH MYSELF FOR MY TIMIDITY AND MY LACK OF WITNESSING TO PEOPLE IN VIETNAM THAT I ACTUALLY AT ONE TIME SAID, GOD, I BELIEVE YOU'RE THROUGH WITH ME. YOU'RE JUST GOING TO SET ME ON THE SHELF. I DIDN'T BELIEVE I'D GO TO HELL. I KNEW I WAS BORN AGAIN, BUT I JUST FELT LIKE, GOD, YOU'RE, you're FED UP WITH ME. I'M FED UP WITH MYSELF. AND I JUST THOUGHT, GOD, HOW COULD YOU LOVE SOMEBODY LIKE ME? I WAS LIVING UNDER SIN CONSCIOUSNESS THINKING THAT MY LACK OF PERFORMANCE SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER CAUSED GOD TO REJECT ME. BUT THESE VERSES SET ME FREE FROM THAT BECAUSE IN THE SAME WAY THAT I COULD SEE THAT MY GOODNESS COULDN'T CAUSE GOD TO ACCEPT ME, HE ACCEPTED ME BASED ON WHETHER OR NOT I RECEIVED JESUS AS MY SAVIOR, NOT MY GOODNESS. MY GOODNESS DIDN'T CHANGE MY SINFUL NATURE. I KNEW THAT. AND THIS IS SAYING IN THE SAME WAY AS THAT IS TRUE, MY BADNESS DOESN'T CHANGE MY BORN-AGAIN NATURE. AND I BEGIN TO RECOGNIZE THAT EVEN THOUGH I FAILED IN MANY WAYS, AND I'M NOT THE PERSON THAT GOD WANTS ME TO BE, THAT GOD LOVES ME. HE'S PASSIONATE ABOUT ME, NOT BECAUSE OF MY PERFORMANCE, BUT BECAUSE OF JESUS' PERFORMANCE, AND I MADE JESUS MY LORD. AND THEREFORE, ALL OF HIS RIGHTEOUSNESS AND ALL OF HIS GOODNESS WAS PUT ON THE INSIDE OF ME. MY BORN-AGAIN MAN, THAT BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT THAT'S ON THE INSIDE OF ME IS RIGHTEOUS AND TRULY HOLY. 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5 AND VERSE 21 SAYS, FOR HE MADE HIM, TALKING ABOUT GOD THE FATHER MADE HIM, JESUS, TO BE MADE SIN FOR US. 
WHO KNEW NO SIN, THAT I MIGHT BE MADE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD IN HIM. JESUS BECAME WHAT I WAS, SIN, SO THAT I COULD BECOME WHAT HE WAS, RIGHTEOUS. AND I NOW HAVE RIGHTEOUSNESS IMPUTED UNTO ME. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS, 2 CORINTHIANS, CHAPTER 5, VERSES 17 THROUGH 21. IT'S IMPUTED UNTO ME. I'VE BEEN RECONCILED UNTO GOD, AND HE LOVES ME, NOT BECAUSE I AM LOVELY, BUT BECAUSE I PUT FAITH IN HIS SON. IT'S BECAUSE HE IS LOVE. AND I'VE NOW RECEIVED THAT. AND I NOW HAVE AN ASSURANCE AND A CONFIDENCE IN MY RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT I DIDN'T HAVE WHEN IT WAS BASED ON MY OWN PERFORMANCE. AND I KNOW THAT THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM BY THE MILLIONS THAT ARE STUCK IN THAT SAME PLACE I WAS WHERE YOU KNOW GOD EXISTS, YOU WANT TO PLEASE HIM, YOU WANT HIM TO ANSWER YOUR PRAYERS, BUT YOU JUST FEEL LIKE, MAN, YOUR, your SIN HAS STOPPED HIM. AND HOW COULD GOD EVER ANSWER YOUR PRAYERS? HOW COULD GOD EVER USE YOU? I'M HERE TO TELL YOU GOOD NEWS, AND THAT IS THAT GOD DOESN'T LOVE YOU BECAUSE YOU ARE LOVELY, BUT BECAUSE HE IS LOVE. AND HE'S EXTENDED THIS LOVE TO YOU THROUGH JESUS. JESUS PAID IT ALL, AND IF YOU WILL ACCEPT HIM, YOU BECOME A BRAND NEW PERSON, AND GOD WILL LOVE YOU REGARDLESS OF WHAT YOU DO. YOUR BADNESS WILL NOT CHANGE YOUR NEW, BORN-AGAIN NATURE ANY MORE THAN YOUR GOODNESS WOULD CHANGE YOUR SINFUL NATURE. BUT THIS TRUTH HAS REVOLUTIONIZED MY LIFE. THAT'S JUST AWESOME. AND LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 22. IT SAYS, BUT NOW BEING MADE FREE FROM SIN AND BECOME SERVANTS TO GOD, YOU HAVE YOUR FRUIT UNTO HOLINESS AND THE END EVERLASTING LIFE. HOLINESS IS NOT THE ROOT. IT'S THE FRUIT OF SALVATION. MOST RELIGION IS TEACHING LIVE HOLY SO THAT GOD WILL ACCEPT YOU. NO. LET GOD ACCEPT YOU BY GRACE, AND ALL YOU DO IS BELIEVE THAT GOOD NEWS, AND THEN HOLINESS BECOMES THE FRUIT, NOT THE ROOT. IT'S NOT WHAT PRODUCES RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. IT COMES AS A BYPRODUCT OF RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. AND THEN A VERSE THAT I'VE USED MANY TIMES ALREADY IN THIS SERIES, ROMANS 6, 23, FOR THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH, BUT THE GIFT OF GOD IS ETERNAL LIFE THROUGH JESUS CHRIST, OUR LORD. SALVATION IS A GIFT TO BE RECEIVED, NOT A WAGE TO BE EARNED. AND RELIGION HAS CORRUPTED MILLIONS OF PEOPLE TELLING THEM THAT YOU'VE GOT TO EARN RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. GOD IS SAYING, NO, IT'S A GIFT. THE GIFT OF GOD IS ETERNAL LIFE. YOU JUST NEED TO RECEIVE IT. IF YOU'VE NEVER RECEIVED THAT GIFT, WE'VE GOT PEOPLE STANDING BY AT THE PHONES RIGHT NOW THAT YOU COULD CALL AND THEY CAN PRAY WITH YOU. YOU NEED TO UNDERSTAND WHAT'S HAPPENING. AND PLUS, WE'VE GOT A BOOK THAT WE'LL GIVE YOU, A LITTLE BOOK ENTITLED THE NEW YOU SLASH HOLY SPIRIT. ALSO, IF YOU CALL IN, YOU COULD REQUEST THIS TEACHING ON ROMANS, PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE. WE'VE GOT NOT ONLY THIS NEW BOOK, BUT WE'VE GOT TESTIMONIES. WE'VE GOT CD'S WHERE I'VE TAUGHT THESE THINGS. AND uh, WE'VE ALSO GOT MY LIVING COMMENTARY WHERE I'VE WRITTEN A COMPUTER-BASED COMMENTARY ON OVER 25,000 VERSES. IN THE BIBLE. IT WOULD BE A BLESSING TO YOU. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION. AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE. IF YOU DON'T KNOW JESUS, CALL AND ASK SOMEONE TO PRAY WITH YOU. WE WOULD LOVE TO HELP YOU COME INTO THAT RELATIONSHIP WITH THE ONE WHO DIED TO GIVE IT TO YOU AS A GIFT. 